Hello, Talk CDL. Are you with me today? I am. You are with me. All right, cool. So, I listen. Didn't go the, anywhere. You weren't going anywhere. <laughs> so, first off, I'd like to start the show today by saying happy birthday to you. Oh, thanks. Today is your actual birth. <clears throat> excuse me, to your birthday. Yeah, it is. We won't out. We won't announce your age. Oh, I don't care. Well, it just it's up to you. Most women don't want to have their age announced. I, I don't care about. You don't care. Seventy two. <laughs> Uh, you only wish. <laughs> no. Little Miss Ruth Ann is 52 today. 52. Wow. Mm -hmm. Anyways, happy birthday. Thank you. And uh, something else I'd like to do is, is I would like to officially apologize to my dad online today, or not online, but on the air today. He, uh, he came to me the other day. Um, you know how my dad's Mr. Conspiracy, right? Oh, yes. The world's going to fall. We're all going to die. Your taxes. You ain't even going to be able to afford your house next year. The taxes are going to be so high. Wait till I show you. You know, it's like one thing after another. I mean, I sit with my dad every Wednesday after church. We, we, I always stop there and sit with him on the porch. And, you know, he smokes his cigarettes and tells me his conspiracy stories. But he came to me the other day. You know, because he knows, obviously, that I'm in trucking. And he's like, did you hear? Did you hear? We're almost out of diesel. We're almost out of diesel fuel. 25 days left. And I'm like, I hadn't heard it at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so he was actually the one to give me the news. And, uh, of course, you know what I'm saying to him. Dad, listen. Why are you believing the internet? Why are you believing the fake news? Right. And so as the week went on, right, I, uh, excuse me, I just want to change the color of my light. As the week went on, I start hearing this from everybody. I mean, literally, like I'm hearing it from like, um, news agencies. I mean, and it's, it's literal. Um, and so I thought, you know, I'm going to look into this diesel thing. I'd hate to miss a big story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? On the podcast, I'd hate to miss out on it, you know. Well, yeah, I a mean. Breaking news. That's, you know. Uh, but, but, okay, so that you brought it up and because I haven't paid attention to any of that. Yeah. Explain it to myself and maybe a few others out there that may have not listened to it either. Okay, so here's, this is off Car Scoops. Um, I, I didn't want to use the major news. I just read a little bit of this. It says the United States has... Just 25 days of diesel supply, and the shortage could impact how Americans vote at the upcoming midterm elections. It says the Energy Information Administration has revealed that the U.S. Now, this is coming right from, honestly, sources, the oil sources. Mm -hmm. Not that they couldn't be lying to us, but, you know, you almost got to take this serious. I mean, it's crazy with all the shortages going on. I know we have we have 25 days supply and then we have a little bit in the ground. And it says the Energy Information uh, Administration has revealed that the U.S. supply of diesel is at its lowest since 2008 and that the four-week rolling average in demand for diesel has risen to its highest seasonal level since 07. It says AAA data has also revealed that the Diesel prices, it's just, they, they got this one wrong. They said 50 cents higher than this time last year. And it's my ass. It's, it's, it's double than this time. Diesel only went through the roof like in June, I think, June or August. But, um, it wasn't, it wasn't five bucks a gallon a year ago, but it was, it was climbing. But here's what it really goes down to. It says stockpiles have been drained due to Russia's ongoing war in the Ukraine. Uh, which has tightened global supplies and limited imports. Additionally, refineries have entered maintenance season. Um, let me just roll on here. It says, while recently speaking on the issue, National Economic Council Director Brian Deese said that the diesel inventories are unacceptably low, adding that all options are on the table to increase supplies and reduce prices. Residents in New England are really feeling, and, and you would expect this, it says they feel the pinch, be, uh, 
uh, the burn more, they burn more diesel for heat than anyone else in the country, but state stockpiles of diesel are a third of what they normally are at this time. So it's really, really down. And because we get oil from Russia, and then I was reading another report it's saying also on the East Coast, the refining of the of the diesel and everything has, um, I don't know, they're having issues doing it. I don't know if it's with the EPA or or because of other shortages. I don't know. All I know is is that this is seeming to be real. And, you know, I started looking into this. And, look, I'm not an advocate for electric vehicles, but you might want to start looking at them. And I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you why. Listen to these numbers. I, I, these are crazy. I want to give you an idea. I want to give you an idea the difference between a million and a billion. Would you like to hear what, what the difference is? Well, yeah, I mean, like a million and a billion, I can... <laughs> well, actually, people don't realize how big of a difference it okay. is. And I want to show you, basically, mm -hmm. how long do you think a billion seconds last? 11 days. Okay. A million seconds. I don't know if I said a billion or a million. I, you said a billion, I thought. No, I apologize. A million seconds lasts 11 days. It takes 11 days for 11 million seconds to go by. Okay. This is the difference between a million and a billion. How long do you think it takes a billion seconds to go by? If a million seconds, it takes 11 days. How long do you think a billion seconds takes? If you were guessing, do you have a guess? I, let me just tell you what it is. 31 years. That's, a, that's the difference between 1 million and 1 billion. It's a crazy, it's craziness. I mean, it's like, for example, a millionaire versus a billionaire. A millionaire is broke compared to a billionaire. You know, when you have a billion dollars, but I don't want to get into the money part. A million seconds takes 11 days. A billion seconds takes 31 years. Now listen to this. This is what we consume in the United States. That's, I wanted to show you the, the differences so you can understand what we consume in the U.S. Just in diesel fuel alone, in one day, we pump 128 million gallons of diesel out the door a day. We burn that in a day, mostly in trucking. Wow. Okay, which that equates to three, a little over 3 million barrels because there's 42 gallons in one barrel. You know how they always, they sell oil on the stock market by the barrel. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So it's, it's 3 million barrels in a day. Okay. That we consume. I'll never be able to put this on video with you yawning so much. Um, three, three million gal, three million barrels a day times 25 days, the supply we have left. They're saying we have 76 million barrels left in the United States. That's all we have. That's, this is what they claim. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you got to kind of take it serious. Now I looked up in 2021, it says distillate fuel consumption by the U S transportation sector, which is basically diesel fuel was 46 billion gallons or 1.1 billion barrels for the entire year, which averages out to what I said earlier, 128 million gallons every single day. United States is the number one oil burner in the world. Okay. And I think China is like second or something like that. China, Russia, China, one of them. But um, how insane does that sound? Okay. Now listen to this. World oil reserves. So I thought, okay, so we're trucking, right? This is what we do. We burn this. How much actual, I Google, anybody can Google this. Google it if you wish. How much oil do you think is left in the earth and how long will that last? According to like experts around the entire world. The days. Huh? They. The days. Well, I mean, you got to believe somebody. You can't think everything. They can't be like my dad. Everything's a conspiracy. No, I, I'm not thinking. I'm just usually we say they. They yeah. say this. They say that. So it's the they's. The they's. The yeah. they's. Well, they are the people that calculate this stuff, and they're pretty good at calculating. Check this out. The World Reser Reserve has 
It says it says the world has proven reserves equivalent to 46.6 times its annual consumption levels. Get it? 46, almost 47 times its annual. You know what that means? It means 46 times our yearly amount that we've been using, which is the 70 some right? billion. Which would it? mean how, how much time do we have left in, in diesel a, or oil? A ton. Well, 47 years. The United, not the, the United States, but the world, according to experts, the world will be bone dry in 47 years. It says the oil reserves in the earth is like one, let me see, I got to make sure of the numbers here. Okay, one million, billion, wait, yeah, that's a, that's a million, that's a billion, 1.6 trillion gallons left in the world. And it says oil consumption in the world is 35 billion barrels a year. And we have 1.6 trillion estimated barrels of oil, which would be times 42 would give you your gallons. So we have like probably somewhere around 50, 60 trillion gallons of fuel and it's going to burn up in 47 years unless, and again, like I said, I'm not an advocate for changing, but you can almost see why the world is trying to move to battery operated and electric electrical. And, and I, I know you need, you need oil to, to build tires and you need oil to run things, including electrical stuff. But if you took away diesel vehicles, it would definitely stretch out. You know, this is why they're always trying to develop, you know, more type of powers. Right. You know, who knows what in a, you know, if you think about like our kids, like you and I are not going to be here in 47 years. I mean, if we are. I'm only 52 today. That's a long time away. That's true. You'll be like 99. So if, if you make it, you'll be 99. I don't think you'll be driving. I mean, you're not even a good driver now <gasps> with your eye, your good eyes. Ah. No, you're not a bad driver. <laughs> I, I guess I'm the bad driver. <laughs> He's horrible. I don't know if I'm horrible. But but now think about it. I'm, I'm not an advocate for electrical vehicles. And I know a lot of drivers. You talk, you interview truckers. They're like, them electrical truck trucks are horrible, man. They're ugly. I wouldn't drive one of them. I'm out. I'm out of truck in the day that I have to drive an electric truck. I'm out. I'm out. Kaput. I'm retiring. I'll go be a greeter at Walmart. Dang it. A greeter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you said something else. So I, I said, I'm laughing because I'm. I, I thought you said something other than greeter. <laughs> no, but but you know, but you think about it though. It, eventually. And maybe not our generation, but our generation has to get ready for the next generation if the oil supply, again, I'm not a conspiracy guy and I'm not afraid, you know, but the bottom line is, you know, that, you know, before, before they discovered coal and gas and everything, you know what, we got around on horses, we got around, we'll survive, the world will su survive without diesel, but if you want if you want to be able to move, you're going to have to come up with another power source because if they're correct, seriously, and they're not going to let us get to four. No, yeah. in the world, if there really is truly 47 years of, of diesel left or not diesel, but oil, crude, crude oil. Okay. If there's really 47 years of it, they're not going to let us even get to the halfway mark because you mm. wouldn't want to burn. You wouldn't want to use it all up. You're going to need it for other things, things that don't use up as much. So, right. Like heating and certain other things. So, I mean, there's going to be, yeah. there's going to be, but the development that we've had in our scientifics when it comes to just like you said, we used to do things by horse and carriage. Honestly, think about it. How long ago was that? I mean, when was the first what was the, when was the first year that a car or a truck came out? I don't know, like um, nineteen hundred or something like that. Eighteen, the late eighteen hundreds. I don't yeah. even. I don't even know what year. What year did the car come out? That's good. You know, we're so dumb on this show. <laughs> I don't even know when the first truck was. It was. Yeah, we, had a, we did a podcast on the first truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. I think it was like nineteen twenty something or ni nineteen nineteen eighteen or nineteen fourteen was the first truck. Okay, I'm I'm looking it up right now because they were using it for the probation. Yeah. Now I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm, the uh, uh, first car 
Uh, first. But my whole thing that I was saying is from now, the, the, how fast we're developing things now, by the time it's 10 years down the road or 20 years down the road, we're going to be so much more advanced in our technologies then. Honestly. 1886. January 29th, 1886, Carl Benz applied for a patent for his vehicle powered by a gas engine. The patent number 37435 may be regarded as the birth certificate of the automobile. In July of 1886, the newspaper reported on the first public uh, cutting of the three-wheeled Benz uh, patent motor car model number one so so even even with the technology of trying to get better i mean we also have to look at this who's to say that something won't drastically happen a war or anything like where we are not going to be driving look how many times how many people are quote going off grid right now so you don't know what's going to happen. I know, but you can't just, with 7 billion people's lives at stake, you can't just go, yeah, well, you know, I ain't going to worry about it because in no, 10 years, our, our technology not, would be much better. No, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. You can't say I'm that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that I have enough, enough faith, but enough of the fact that I think that there's going to be enough people, well, not enough people, but enough advancement that it's going to get figured out soon not maybe like the next year or two but they're they're probably i can guarantee they're already thinking of a way out of it that's why they're doing the solar power or the electric vehicles i mean they still have to use electric to run that stuff i mean that's why we have the, the hoover dam and different other things that's how our electric is ran by other power another power source water or, oh. or sun or or other wind yeah okay now, just relax for a second i i'm i i know Okay, everything's got to run out eventually. You can't, we can't, and I know you're not saying it won't. I'm just saying, but there's a lot of people out there that are so against like electric powered vehicles. And I, I'm not a big fan of them. I mean, I think Tesla's pretty cool, but if we're being honest, you can't, the earth can't just pump um, crude oil out forever. It, it, it's impossible. Stuff runs out. Mm-hmm. So we're going to use up that resource someday. And, you know, it, it, we just read it. 1886 was the first year of the car. Like you said, they, it's, it's used for heating all around the world. I'll tell you something else that's honestly huge ma- uh, amount of gallons in the earth is natural gas. It, it's natural gas forms all the time. So, but, and, but they don't have a lot of natural gas motors, but they do have an engine that runs on natural gas. Really? See, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I mean, like... I mean, I'm sure they're going to get it figured out, whether it be natural gas or electric vehicles. And electric vehicles are doing well. It's just trying to get it to where, you know, 80,000 pounds can be pulled. And who knows how that's going to really play out. But it's it's ironic because Tesla just announced that they're finally, Lord willing, this year going to have the first so many Tesla trucks going to Pepsi. And uh, they're going to, you know, be switching over to electric. It, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, the, you know, everybody, I'm one of those guys that I remember when I was driving truck, right. And they came out with this thing called Qualcomm. <laughs> I'm serious. So they're like, everybody's going, and I was one of them going F that. If you put a, you put one of those satellites in my truck, I don't need a babysitter for, for when I'm driving, I'll go find another company. I won't put up with this crap. And, and I'm serious. Like, you know, like nobody even blinks their eye at a Qualcomm now. No, I got stock in it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do well, but I got stock in it. What are you it. talking about? It does well. We're, we're making money on Qualcomm. No, I'm just saying it's not like it's like the big... It's not a it, huge. We've made money on Qualcomm, but the bottom line is, the bottom line is everybody resists change. Like everybody hates the electric trucks because, you know, of the way um, it is now. I mean, and a couple of years ago, everybody was flipping out over automatics coming into the industry. I well, we ain't going to drive no damn automatic. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Every, almost every, I talk to guys all the time, right? And most of them love their automatics. And these are guys that have been driving for 30 years. Now, yes, there are some guys that are, they're diehard stick shifts. I'm a diehard stick shift guy. But the bottom line is you can't, 
the, those that resist change get left behind. If you keep resisting the future, all you're doing is, is putting yourself behind. And I'm telling you, this is the truth. They're not investing trillions of dollars in the world on electric cars, okay, to have a bunch of truck drivers say, F that, man, we don't want them. I'm telling you, they're coming. You might as well either embrace them or get out of the industry. But the bottom line is they're, they're really, technically, we're at that point right now. It's a really weird point in time if you think about it you know like i always ask people do you know what the most futuristic point of time that any person knows about and they always have that deer in the headlight looks and i say it's right now the future congratulations you made it to the most futuristic moment point in time we are the future right now your face is touching the future and so you think about the generations go back to to Adam and Eve, go back to Abraham, go back thousands of years where each generation, every 50 to 100 years, you know, you got two or three generations in that and and they're all dead. Everybody that we've read about in history, everything, they're dead in the ground. Our human being people right now, we're all at the moment where we're alive and we're embracing time right now. And we're at a moment where we can say, hey, 47 years, we're out of freaking oil. Right. The entire earth will be out of oil in 47 years. And I'm telling you, that's not, I don't believe that that's a myth. I think it's true. Mm-hmm. Well, they've been saying it for a while. I mean, it's just, they, they it's getting closer and closer. Um, isn't my car, like, even though it's automatic, you can hit the paddles? And the- yeah, you can change yours to shift. It's got the paddle shift, but it doesn't have a clutch. Yeah, you know I know. I mean? That's why I'm like, trying to... It's like you can you can use it, burp, 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 you know what I mean, and, and paddle shift, which we never do. No, that's why I was like, when you were talking about it, made me think of it. That's sorry. Just, so, anyways, just, anyways, I wanted to talk about that. Apologize squirrel. to dad. It wasn't really a conspiracy thing. It's really, it's a real thing it's happening. Cousinomics. It's, it's, yeah, he, <laughs> my dad calls everything cousinomics. <laughs> but, but that's what it is. Um, time to move on? Moving how, on. How about we take a little sponsor break? And we'll mention, let's start with uh, Carter Lumber. Carter Lumber drivers, if you're looking for a local home everyday job and you've got a class A or a class B, go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. That's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. And they have over 160 locations east of the Mississippi. Ruth Ann, we're also brought to you by National Carriers. Got those big Beautiful Kenworth T680s. They're looking for some student drivers. They're looking for some OTR drivers. They're looking for regional drivers. They got everything over there and lease. Call them today at 888-311-7076. That's 888-311-7076. DriveWise is another sponsor of Talk CDL Ruth Ann. That's D-R-I-V-E-W-Y-Z-E dot com. If you're looking to bypass the scales and you just want to get an app, if you got a small company or a, a small owner operator, just download it today. Download the app and you don't have to have any transponders in the truck and you can start bypassing the tolls or not the tolls. That'd be really nice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> By, bypassing the scale house today. That's drive wise, D R I V E W Y Z E dot com. And last but not least, Camion brought to you by load smart is another sponsor of talk CDL. Check out these sponsors, by the way, drivers. And I'm going to spell it for you. If you want a free break, even calculator, it'll help you utilize your truck, especially if you're an owner operator, or a small company, K, a M I O N is a Nancy dot I O forward slash talk CDL. I'm going to do it slowly. K A M is in Michael. I O N is in Nancy dot I O forward slash talk CDL. Download it today. Ruth Ann, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. So, My nose is so itchy right now. You know that means you're going to get in a fight. Uh oh. And no, I'm serious. It really does. It did. It got really, really itchy. I don't know. Maybe it's dusty in here. No, I'm serious. Uh, And my aunt, you know what she used to say? If like I would kiss a letter, something better. Yeah. She would say, kiss a letter, make it better. So I have no idea what the heck that even means. It means you're either going to get a kiss, you're going to get a letter or you're going to something better. Well, all I know is if my nose was itchy, I did get in a fight (laughs) and I got, and I had a, I had a, I had a buddy, Ronnie. He would he would start itching his palms of his hand and he'd go oh that means freaking money's coming Mm -hmm. it was like people have such weird (laughs) (laughs) suit they're so stupid (laughs) I'm getting money (laughs) now my hands itchy yeah whatever so so there's a new trend in the industry Um, it's like probably not a new trend but it's happening a lot more a lot of companies have been telling me what's going on and I want to mention this to truck drivers that are doing this because I'm going to tell you something Um, it's not a good thing Um, here's what's going on. 
It's a normal trend. Well, uh, let's say, and, and I'll tell you where it happens a lot in Chicago. You get a lot of these companies up there in Chicago that they don't, uh, they don't supply a ride to orientation, right? Okay. And so what's happening is some of these other guys are getting approved at another company, right? Up that way. And what they're doing is they're catching, getting a plane ride from another company and then going to work for somebody else. Or like, say they need to get to Dallas or like, say they need to get to Tampa or say they need to get to, I don't know, Philadelphia. They'll apply for a company in those areas because you can get a, you can get approved for a trucking company in five seconds. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing is they're like, if they need to get to a, a, a city that you know, a trucking company saying, you just need to get here and we'll give you a job. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're going and applying with a bunch of companies in that area. And then when somebody says you're approved, we're going to give you an airplane ticket or a bus ride, whatever, a free ride. Right. Mm -hmm. They literally, um, get on the plane. Like for, I'll give you an example. Let's say you're going to work for, um, a, a J John Doe trucking in Chicago. Right. But John Doe trucking says, okay, you're approved, but we, we, uh, we don't supply the ride to orientation. So you go and you go, Oh, I think I'll just supply with, um, Jane's trucking transportation company. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jane's trucking transportation company says you're approved. We're going to go ahead and give you a plane ticket, but you really want to work for John Doe. Wink, wink. So you get on the plane for Jane Doe and you fly into Chicago and then you have John Doe pick you up and you never answer the phone and screw Jane Doe over. Wow. Oh, I know. And it's, I've, I've uh, the one trucking company I was talking to, they, I said, does this happen a lot? He goes every week. He says every week somebody gets a plane ticket or a ride and then we can't, but guess what? You ready? What? They're fighting back. Good. You know what they're doing? Huh. They're putting on their deck. Okay, either misuse of company funds or theft by deception of company funds. So now, if you're a driver out there, right? This is and I love this because if you're screwing people like that, I hope you get caught. I really do. It's it's deceitful. You ruin it for everybody else. I'm not all about somebody. It was funny. <laughs> oh, I got my, uh, a free plane. If you can't even afford a freaking plane ticket because you're so broke all the time and you're hopping from freaking job to job to job to job, seriously. And now you're screwing people over to get money to where you can get to orientation. You have no honor. You have zero honor. There's a lot of good truck drivers out there. And these are the guys that give them a bad name. Mm -hmm. So like I said, they're fighting back. They're putting it on their decks now because now you authorize them to spend money on you. Mm -hmm. And now they're putting it on there for the next company. And when the next company sees that, that there's a word theft or something like that on there, um, deception, Guess what? Now a lot of companies aren't going to hire you. So if that's your game, you might want to think again. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. It kind of it kind of upset me when I was the one company I was talking to started telling me about. It. So I start I talked to a couple other companies, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've been we've been screwed like that a bunch of times. People used us to hitch a ride. Yeah. See, Isn't that sick? But that, that ruins it. You know how there's so many drivers out there when all the only way you used to get to orientation was by bus. And then yeah. drivers were, oh, I hate the bus. I hate, and they complained so badly that companies started to get a little bit better and get them plane rental, tickets. Or a rental car. Or rental, yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, these, these, these companies were trying to do better for the drivers by doing that for them. Now these, now that they 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 get these ways of they get this way of transportation, the drivers that are now doing that, they're going to end up screwing everybody else so badly that they'll revert back to just okay. Only way we're going to bring you in is by bus. Yeah, well, or or all of them are going to say you're going to have to find your own way. Gosh, you're loud today, man. I am not. <laughs> okay, you have to look at the graphs. Uh, so I don't uh, okay, care what uh, the graphs say. I'm not loud. Okay, so so look. Bottom line is, guys, be honorable. I mean, it, that, honestly, if if a company doesn't want to pay for your ride to orientation, you're going to have to figure something out. But don't screw another company over to get there. Mm -hmm. That that is just downright, honestly, downright despicable. So despicable it is despicable i mean I, I i can't stand that it's like my gosh there's enough problems in the world why do we got to screw on what are you laughing at you got something no it was a looney tune but it wasn't despicable what they said yeah it was you're talking about the cat when he would go despicable no it's suffering success that's what it was uh, but i did the same thing you just did see yeah 
Yeah. All right. Moving. Lots of minds. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. So, hey, you know, the, uh, remember we did a story a little while back about um, teenagers going, you know, uh, in, uh, it was a California high school. We interviewed a, a company out there or mm-hmm. a school. Yeah, and, I get notifications from for them. Right. So they, they uh, have a, it's like shop class. They actually have a trucker class now. Mm-hmm. Well, we interviewed them and, and it's these like, you know, like, in fact, what, what was that um, one class back in high school? Like Future Farmers of America, FFA. 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 I mean, back in Pennsylvania, they had FFA. They have them everywhere. So I guess that they have FFT, Future, or FFTA, Future Truckers of America, you know. Um, There's a school now in Maryland doing it. That's good. Yeah. it's um, It says, the driver of the big rig one lane over might soon be one of these teenagers. I'll just read a little bit of it. It says, on the grounds of Williamsport High School in Western Maryland, three 17-year-olds pile into a cab of a white Volvo truck, pens and pads in hands. The record, uh, they record the odometer, check for wearing lights, um, I'm sorry, warning lights, honk the horn, and test the brakes. It's all part of what's called a pre-trip inspection. No, obviously we all know that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it says in the real world, the process takes about ten minutes, but today the students move slowly and methodically under the watchful eye of their instructor, Eric Young. And you know, some people go, "Oh, that's bullcrap." But you know what? That's they can't get their license till they're twenty-one, at least. Well, they can get it at eighteen and do interstate, and they're trying to introduce um, it to where eighteen-year-olds can drive across state line. Whether that's going to happen or not. That remains to be seen. But the bottom line is at least just like this is like old school. These guys are getting mentored before they even can physically drive on the road. I think that's awesome. They're learning. Yeah, I do. Yeah, they're learning about the rig. They're learning what the rig can do. They're learning all the. And I'll tell you something else. In today's world, you know, I was talking to a driver the other day and he said um, that he got his license without going to a school. I said, dude, you're screwed. I said, there aren't many people going to hire you at all. That's, you can't, you cannot get a job barely unless it's like with some unknown company. Honestly, you might be able to, Mm -hmm. but, and you know, a lot of that has to do with not just the driving aspect about it, but the, 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 uh, the regulations that DOT has implemented on, on, on truck drivers today, you almost need a college degree to understand everything. And so um, these kids are learning all of that, all the latest hours, all uh, everything they're learning, um, from hours of service to, you know, all new techniques to, you know, probably how to run autonomous trucks and all these kids are going to be pretty advanced. And so it's, uh, I think it's great that schools are really starting to do this. It's catching on. I told you, uh, back when we did that interview, this would be nice if this catches on. It's almost like you don't have many grandpas and dads that are even allowed to put their kid in the truck and teach them how to drive these days like like my grandfather did for me right Mm -hmm. well unless your grandfather your dad is a true owner operator with his own dot number it's almost impossible because dad would get fired if he had like say a schneider or a jb hunt truck and he wanted to teach his kid how to drive that Mm -hmm. don't really exist as much but in school now these young kids can now get into a like a a, a votech or whatever type of technical school in, mm-hmm. the, in the high school and learn how to drive a truck trailer and learn it right. right. Hopefully learn it right. Cause I think uh, the one that we interviewed in California, that dude was like 30 years in trucking. Mm-hmm. You know they I mean? The guy that was running the school. Right. Right. Yeah. So there you have that. And Ruth Ann, I think, let me just look, I just wanted to just double check if I had something else for the, the people out there. And I think that is the podcast. Oh, no, there's something I wanted to mention. Check this. Well, it's actually not funny. I shouldn't giggle. Gunfire exchange between trucker and motorist in Kansas City. Road rage incident. Listen to this. A suspected road rage um, sh- uh, shooting involving a semi-truck and a car driver was reported in Kansas City, Missouri. This was on Friday. The incident occurred at 1135 a.m. on I-35, according to state police. Local outlet... Um, News reported that the driver of a black Dodge cha- uh, Charger pulled out in front of a semi truck and slowed, forcing the truck driver to halt on the interstate. Now, here's where it gets weird. It says a person exited the Dodge while the truck driver exited the cab of the semi. So they got out together. Ching, 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 right? Seriously, it says the two exchanged gunfire. 
Seriously. So the dude gets out of the car. The dude gets out of the tractor trailer. And it's like, on three, draw. And they start shooting at each other, right? It says the black car fled the scene uh, onto the, the northeast chateau traffic way while traveling northbound. The truck driver wasn't injured, but the Missouri State Highway Patrol said the truck was full of bullet holes. How the hell did they miss each other? I, w- I mean, it's like, wow. Can you ma- imagine that? They're literally shooting each other. Ne- nobody gets hit. And the truck, the truck's all shot up. I mean, that goes to show you guys, seriously, I, if you can, so I would did carry. It, did, did, uh, I don't think I'm very loud right now. Because no you kept turning me down. There you go. So did it actually say the, dry, the truck driver himself? I mean, it says they exchanged gunfire. But did it? Is there anything else saying that the it just driver? Says, it just says the the charger or challenger, whatever it was, pulled out in front of the trucker and slowed down to where the trucker had to stop. To me, that doesn't sound like the rest of the story, does it? I mean, had, something had to lead up to why would that car want to pull out in front of the trucker and then make him come to a stop on the interstate, on the road? They said on I thirty five, right? That's what it said. So what what sounds right? Yeah, on I thirty five. So why would cars don't just go, okay, I'm going to go mess with a trucker. I mean, they could, but I don't know. It sounds like something had to happen before that. Yeah. More than likely the trucker accidentally cut him off somehow because he didn't see him because the challenger is probably playing games with him. So I don't know. You never, I'll tell you when I was a driver, you know, you'd see, and I was guilty of it. You know, you'd, you'd see in your mirror, somebody tell you on the CBS, one guy's flying like an idiot, he's in and out of traffic. And then you're in the passing lane and you purposely don't let him go by you, slow mm-hmm. him down a little mm-hmm. bit. But the problem with that is it enrages some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it does, definitely. This, even our county alone, there was a big road rage incident last week. Really? What yeah. happened? Guy shot, they, they, he actually got out and there was a, they killed him. The, yeah. the, one driver, they, they got out and... In our county? Mm-hmm. I didn't hear about it. Yeah. There was like 10 cops around it. It was... What town? Um, it was on 44... Um, Inverness? 44 40, 40, 40 and 46, somewhere in that area. Really? In, he- in Crystal River? Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. I'll try and pull the article up for you. Who killed them? The cops? No. It was it was the uh, the person they, they forced someone off and, and I want to say it was like an 80-some-year-old woman he shot. Wow. Okay. Well, there's two incidences, no. two nights in a row. Oh. So look, bottom line is drivers, you see a guy, and I'm, okay, we're not, I'm not saying it was the trucker's fault, but I am saying this. There's many times where we kind of could avoid the road rage thing. And in a tractor trailer, you're probably better off avoiding it. Seriously, because the truckers have been shot quite a few times over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And even if you are carrying, and if they find dash cam video that you were messing back with the car and you got in a gunfight and you end up shooting them and you say it was in self-defense and then they got somebody else's dash cam five miles ago or 20 miles ago saying, no, look at this. This trucker was just as involved. Mm-hmm. You're going to prison, dude. Mm-hmm. So you, you're really better off just avoiding um, drivers that are driving stupid in and out of traffic let them get down in fact you know what i used to do a lot of times when i would know they're coming i would i'd be looking for a cop so i can like get out of his way and let him just shoot by me and get pulled over Mm -hmm. but um yeah that's 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 some bad stuff guys and gals be careful out there on the road um road rage is real in fact there was another incident today i seen it in the news where a dude was shooting at another guy because he had a donut you know i mean one of those donut tires on his car because he he didn't want to go too fast because he, he had one of those little right, spare right. tires on. So um, the guy behind him was weaving in and out trying to get around him and then finally started shooting at him. And guess what? He had a baby in the car and a bullet went right into the car seat. Oh, wow. It didn't hit the baby, but it, it, there was bullet holes in the car and one was in the car, the baby seat. It's like... Dude, you know, if you'd have just got, you're, you're trying to hold this guy up that's in a hurry. Maybe he's in an emergency. Maybe, maybe he's pissed off. Maybe he caught his old lady in bed with somebody. Whatever. The guy's psychotic. He's swerving all over the road to get around you and you're going to hold him up and he pulls a gun out. You're lucky your baby's not dead. Right. Seriously. The next time somebody's flashing their lights behind you and they're wanting to get around you, you got, you got to think about that for a second. That dude pulls a gun out. Okay. 
you're going to wish if he kills somebody in your car that you got out of his damn way. It isn't worth it. Anyways, it's not worth it. avoid road rage. Get down the road. Just call the police. Ruthann, that's the podcast for the week. Wow. It just you, seems so quick. Um, eh, we're at 40 minutes. Do you, do you have... Um, Another word of the day. You got it. Yeah, from uh, Word Genius. Okay. You ready? I don't know why your mic isn't working too good. Okay. There it is. There it is. Ready? Yeah. Halix. Halix? Halix. Like Alex with an H? Um, H-A-L-L-U-X. Halix. What's Halix? It's a big toe. It's your big toe? Get the heck out of here. <laughs> no, Halix. It's a big, it's your big toe. Anatomy, a person's big toe. Or if you really want to go into the other part of it, it's zoology, the innermost digit of the hind foot of vertebrates. So Jarvis stubbed his hallux on the corner of the sofa. I got an idea. I'm going to name my big toe Alex. Alex the hallux. <laughs> You're just stupid. (laughs) (laughs) We're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.